Hi, this is a report I did for a class. It's on global CO2 emissions since 1960. This is the cover page. It's done in Excel. Introduction here. Um, the goal of this project is to show global CO2 emissions and apply statistical models to see if there's a correlation between the amount of carbon dioxide emitted and time la elapsed. The linear regression model will look for an absolute relationship between the dependent variable, CO2 emitted in the unit million metric tons, and the independent variable, time, in the unit years. The absolute relationship will be known by its constant rate of change. Um, the exponential regression model will look for a relative relationship between the same variables. If a correlation is showed between the two variables in this model, it will show some form of a um, sharply increasing curve on the graph. The data comes from the Carbon Dioxide Information Analysis Center, and this is what their page looks like. They have a lot of data. It's um, a DOE, uh, Department of Energy, um, office and it's located at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. They've posted estimates for CO, global CO2 emissions for 2009 and 2010, which was not included in the initial data set. So I've included the 2010 figure in the small data set for every five years since 1960. And then I've also done models for um, every year since 1960 as all of the data was available on their website. And this is the data set, the small one with the um, 2010 amount added and then the large one that starts in 1960 even though they do have data going back to 1751 all the way through 2011. Here are the models. This is the first linear model. Um, this is uh, with the, the smaller data, data set with points for every five years. And in this model, our slope or our rate of change is 118.63 and our y-intercept is 2639. That means that our initial value in 1960 was 2,639 million metric tons of CO2 in the atmosphere. And the rate of change is that it um, increases by 118.63 million metric tons every um, five years. The correlation factor is the R squared value, and that's 0.97. And that tells us there's a very, very strong indication that tells us how well the variation in the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable. And this number is an overall measure of the usefulness of your model. Now we go on to our exponential model and we see our calculations to get our rate of change and our rate of change comes out to be 0.02. And we see this one is, is curving slightly. Um, the R squared factor is 0.95 so it's just a little bit less than the linear model. We find our, our initial value, our base value um, at the beginning of the equation after the equal sign in rather than at the end as it is in the linear model. So here our initial value in 1960 would have been 2,982.2 metric tons. There was so much data available. I went ahead and um, did a, a linear regression trend line here. And as you can see, with all that extra data, the new years is they're not really hitting the hitting the line. That tells me to use as much data as is, is available. And also, um, you can look and see that the points from um, 2000, really, in the last 10 years, they've kind of gotten sharper. If we go down here to the exponential model, you can see that the, the last 10 years are hitting the models trend line here. So this might be what um, scientists sometimes call a runaway effect, where the exponential model all of a sudden makes a very, very sharp, steep curve and seems to shoot up rather 
almost in a straight line and we hope this isn't going to be the case but it seems like we should take a yearly look at these things um, seeing as how sh how it's hitting the mark there now going on to some testing our, our models um, I put in 60 as for the year a year after 1960 and it looks like we will have in 2022 um, according to the linear regression model 9756.8 million metric tons of CO2 in the atmosphere using goal seek you put your labels here okay you have your independent variable and your dependent variable now you come here and you put your formula and since we're looking for uh, the independent variable you put your formula where the dependent variable is the the amount you want to know so I want to know when we're going to have 10,000 million metric tons of CO2 in the atmosphere so I put my formula here as my dependent variable and I go up here to data what if goal seek and I tell I tell it that T11 you can tell by the yellow highlights here I'm in T11 I want to set that cell to 10,000 and then I, I want to do that and I want to find this cell and I can click on it here and say OK and it gives me it gives me the um, the time in years as 62 so I add that on to 1960 and it tells me that um, in 2022 we'll have the linear regression model tells me that we'll have um, 10,000 million metric tons of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now if you go on to the um, to the exponential model you can see that our goal C comes up with 3.28 so that tells me that in 1963 <laughs> we would have that many uh, metric <laughs> 10,000 million metric tons now personally <laughs> if you see up here my little note in the blue here I don't think that these are reasonable calculations because the linear model doesn't take into account the sum effects of all the changes that are occur occurring due to some so much carbon dioxide whereas the exponential model does to tell you the truth I, I'm yeah, I go down here and I see this and I see it probably curving like in a straight line going up toward that O right there uh, I think we're in for a world of trouble but that's just my personal opinion which we were asked for now going on to our summary like I say the exponential model is the best fit as it takes is it takes growth into consideration while measuring the growth of the carbon dioxide emissions okay that is the changes relative based upon where your last measuring point was thus the exponential nature of the growth of co2 emis emissions is just now being readily sh shown it seems like we might get what scientists call a runaway effect these are some graphs I got off of and this is a 3D effect of the different countries emitting carbon. There is another video, and it's uh, on this website called Carbon Visuals. These little round balls, these spheres, um, represent one ton of CO2, and it's 33 feet across. This pile you see. Um, here in New York City represents 1,449,903 metric tons of carbon emitted in one day. Um, in 2010, New York City emitted 54 million metric tons. Um, this is another type of 3D visual from Carbon Visuals. They have a video, um, the I couldn't embed it on this but it's very good it's only three minutes long and gives you an idea of really what we're dealing with and there is another video they call it the Vulcan study by Purdue that is really has some really good this one here by Purdue revolutionary CO2 maps excuse me 
I'm just going to skip ahead and it shows you here it shows you by time and it has all the different types of CO2 emissions it's really very interesting I'm going to see if I can mute it and you see it's running through the times of day and you can see how how it's kind of concentrated over here in the east and then it goes on here this is a 3D effect of the carbon and you can see it going off into the ocean and into the northwest we really need to <laughs> be more aware of um, our atmosphere and uh, how it affects us